Hey friend, L. Steve here. Welcome back to Wrestle Juice. So on yesterday's video, if you'll remember, we took a look at my personal favorite WrestleMania matches, the ones that stood out to me, that moved me emotionally or made me laugh, cry, whatever. I, I actually haven't cried watching pro wrestling, I don't think. I think I've gotten close a couple of times. Anyways, so I thought it would be fun on today's episode to go the exact opposite route because everybody loves a little bit of negativity in their lives, especially in the world of professional wrestling. So I thought today I would run down the worst matches in WrestleMania history, according to me. These are basically my least favorite WrestleMania matches. Now, as I explained yesterday, my criteria is going to be a little bit different here on the channel than like if I tried to do an objective list about like the actual worst matches at WrestleMania. I'm sure several of the matches on my list will would make that same list, you know, objectively just horrible matches at WrestleMania because there are a lot of them. But I'm just sort of going by my own personal experience with pro wrestling, with WrestleMania. And so there's a lot of matches that might be on your list of what's worst at WrestleMania that won't land on mine simply because I just don't remember them. I've got a notoriously bad memory. And so for you to make this list, for a match to make my list of the worst, you've gotta be pretty damn bad. Or maybe I was just in a really bad spot in my life. I don't know. I'll give you an example. I know that at one of the WrestleManias, the great Kali took on Kane. Can't imagine that was any good. Don't remember anything about it. Probably wasn't even watching wrestling at the time. I did take a break, probably like from 22 to 26. I, I barely remember a thing about those. So like the Trump match, it's probably not very good. Whatever they did there, Umaga versus Lashley, I think that was. I don't know, maybe it was a good match, maybe it wasn't. Owen Hart versus Skinner was at like WrestleMania nine or something. I don't know, maybe it wasn't. I've seen WrestleMania nine, I don't remember that. I don't know where that match was. Do you get my point? Anyways, uh, the, the entire WrestleMania where they just did a tournament, what was it, uh, four, I think it was? I don't even know if I've watched that one, to be completely honest with you. I've probably seen highlights from it, but I don't want to see an entire tournament of bad matches. Anyways, we'll go ahead and start here. Uh, we're going to go to WrestleMania 19. These are in no particular order, except for the very last one, which just like yesterday with End of an Era, uh, was this the, the last one on this list is the absolute worst, and I think probably in history, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. But before we get there, because we got a lot to get through, Triple H versus Booker T. We all know what they were doing here. We all know what they were doing here. If I recall correctly, Booker T, relatively recent last couple of years, has sort of defended this match as not being what we all kind of know what it was. And that's good for him. Hopefully he has a positive outlook on this. But the build to this match, the finish of this match, we all know what they were doing here. And it was awful, and it was ridiculous, and Booker T is one of my favorite guys. And that's coming from a huge Triple H fan. I'm a massive Triple H fan, but this was a massive L on his record. Uh, it was a big butt stain on the history of WrestleMania. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get in too much hot water, but come on now. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Uh, oh, this was just sad. WrestleMania 26. Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon. Now, I understand the idea of this. Vince McMahon letting fans witness and experience that big moment where Bret Hart finally gets, after whatever it was, 10 years or whatever it was, finally gets uh, his revenge on Vince McMahon for the Montreal screw job. It's just Vince physically wasn't like allowed to really wrestle like he couldn't wrestle this was post him having a stroke and all sorts of issues and then and, and way past the Goldberg retirement thing it was this was just sad and again I wasn't watching at the time I think I started watching again after this but I do remember watching it in retrospect probably for something we did over at going in raw and man it's just, it's just sad. It doesn't, this doesn't do what I think it like it was supposed to do. Make me feel good. It just made me feel bad and more mad at Goldberg than anything for taking away what probably was another 10 years of a Bret Hart career because it's not like he wrestled in a terribly risky style. Uh, next, Brock Lesnar versus Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania 32. 
Good Lord. This was like the worst of what Brock Lesnar would bring to the table. And actually, there's another Brock Lesnar match on here as well, which is sort of illustrated when Brock Lesnar is at his best. He's actually really good whenever he's wrestling. It's whatever reason, whenever they tell like the David Goliath story with Brock Lesnar, when he wrestles the smaller dudes, when he wrestled Daniel Bryan, when he got back from his uh, you know concussion issues or whatever it was, when he wrestled Rey Mysterio, these are all relatively recently. I think even he had like a match against Finn Balor, which if I recall was decent. I'm not counting the Ricochet one uh, or the Kofi Kingston one, but generally speaking, when Brock Lesnar's really when Brock Lesnar is trying and he's doing something that he obviously really wants to do, he's really damn good. Uh, and then there's this when he clearly, clearly had no desire to work with Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, John Moxley said as much when his, he made that appearance on the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast. This match was terrible. It was boring. It was Brock Lesnar boning it in and Dean Ambrose trying to make chicken shit at a chicken salad. See what I did there? Uh, next, anything, anything that was inside the Performance Center or WrestleMania 36. Look, I get it. I was there, not physically there, but I, we all went through COVID together. We all went through pandemic together. It was a horrible time. And they made, they were, again, they were trying to make chicken, chicken shit out of chicken salad. And, uh, and that's what we got. Big old empty performance center. Uh, just a bunch of, it seemed like a bunch of just, you know, moves that they were training to do a match. And it was uh, really not good. Th those were brutal, brutal times for pro wrestling. I will give credit to AEW during that spell for having Daly's Place with wrestlers sort of lining up on the sides and being the, the audience in attendance, and they would slowly bring some people in with some heavy testing protocols and stuff. They, look, they, they had to do what they had to do. I get it. But having WrestleMania inside the Performance Center, boy, that was terrible. <laughs> that was just awful. Nothing you can do about it, but it just sucked. Another thing that sucked, WrestleMania 33, not the whole thing. There were some things about WrestleMania 33 that were fine. One of the things that was not fine was Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship. It was like squarely middle of the card. So that's how they thought about the WWE Championship as opposed to the Universal Championship at this point. But still, it was really cool having Bray Wyatt win that title. It was awesome. And then him and Randy Orton, they had a really kind of a cool story leading up to this WrestleMania. You know, like Orton had sort of burrowed his way into the Wyatt family. There was some tension between him, him and Luke Harper. And then they, they just didn't nail the finish. They should have done the thing where Luke Harper had had enough and they made him into his own Brody Lee-esque character, the Brody Lee that we saw later on in AEW. They should have given Luke Harper that go-ahead to become his own fully realized character and made this a triple threat. That would have been awesome. You create a new star in Brody Lee, Luke Harper, whatever. Instead, they sort of like speed ran the finish uh, towards the build where all of a sudden out of nowhere, Randy Orton just burns down Bray Wyatt's house and there wasn't really a build to it. Uh, and, and, and even if you thought that part was cool, the match itself was just... You know, man, I watched that Bray Wyatt documentary and there's a part in it where Triple H says, you know, I'm captivated by your ideas. I really like where you're going with this. But at a certain point, the bell rings, ding, ding. And then you got to have a match. And that did always seem to be the push and pull with Bray Wyatt. If you look at like his crowning achievement within WWE, it's a short film. It's Firefly Funhouse. He had good matches. He was an awesome wrestler. Uh, but, you know, his grander ideas about uh, various iterations of his character just sort of didn't necessarily translate with like, okay, now we got to go run ropes and I get it. And that's what this match sort of was, you know, the first big chunk of like, wow, you got to figure out a way to meld this horror movie villain guy into the world of pro wrestling and doing projections of maggots on uh on the, the wrestling mat that just that just ain't the way to do it it's not the way to do it so uh that's on here i remember watching this being thoroughly underwhelmed i think i was that was there i think it was 33 again i have a terrible memory anyways let's move on next up oh i'm gonna get shit for this one that's why i'm burying it in the middle of the episode i'm gonna get shit for this one Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 or whatever it was. Man, 
I know that everybody's like, oh, this is great. And the, the, the last 10 minutes of it are great. The last 10 minutes or so are great. I love the finish. Brett's like, I did it. I'm good. I'm out of here. And then uh, they come out and they're like, nah, this match is not going to end now. And then he loses. It's awesome, right? The finish is awesome. I don't have the patience to sit there for an hour. Look, and I know I, it's just Iron Man matches that go an hour. Not into it. I'm not into it. Any, like, I, there was that one, I think, what was it? Brian Danielson versus MJF last year. That was like, okay, this is cool. It didn't really feel like an hour. It's good. Man, oh man. It's tough. It's tough to do 60 minutes. And then plus like five extra or whatever they did. That's not an easy task. I didn't watch this. I wasn't watching WWF back when this was like current. Uh, I went back and watched this after the fact for something we did at Going and Raw. And it is kind of boring, not going to lie. It's not the most compelling thing in the world, but the finish is awesome. But yeah, it, you know, there was a period of time everybody's pointing this point. Oh my God, they did 60 minutes. It's an Iron Man match. And then I think there was sort of a general shift in the wrestling culture of like, was it really that good though? Was it? Like an hour is a lot to ask. Anyways, I'll stop. Uh, next up, this is an easy one. I think everybody can agree with me on this one. Triple H versus the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 12. Goddamn, son. Wowie wow. A minute and 39 seconds of Triple H getting buried. A lot of people incorrectly assume this is part of Triple H's punishment for the curtain call when in fact it happened like two months before the curtain call. And this was so this was not Triple H getting punished. It was simply Vince trying to make a shocking moment at WrestleMania, you know, immediately burying one of the young stars that he's trying to build up. And it was stupid and it was awful. And I love how much Triple H ran down Ultimate Warrior in the rise and fall, or was it the the spect the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior? That DVD, which I still have somewhere, I should do a review on that at some point because it is amazing. It is so good, uh, and this match is terrible. Talk about terrible. Let's move on to uh, the fairly recent past. We're talking about WrestleMania 38, Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. This was one of those things where it seemed like Vince kind of understood, okay, I'm on my way out. They're probably going to find out that I've been doing really awful things and uh, I'll probably get like, you know, taken away for it. <laughs> uh, and so they did this thing where like Pat McAfee and Austin Theory had a match. Pat McAfee won that, but then Austin, uh, Vince McMahon was like, I'll show you how it's done. I'm not it be. And then he gets in there and I guess he beats Pat McAfee. It was stupid, and then Austin comes down and he gives like the worst stunner of all time to Vince McMahon. At least that's how I kind of remember it. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened, and it was awful. It was terrible. Vince McMahon should not have been on TV. It was one of those things where it was like, this is really bad. It's mildly funny, but in retrospect, it's just Vince McMahon not wanting to get out of the spotlight, wanting one last you know, gasp for attention. Uh, in in the world of wrestling, it was horrible. It was stupid. It was awful. I hated it. Next up, this one is similar to that one, but fucking hilarious. And I'm talking, of course, about Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Fun fact: this match is not even acknowledged on Wikipedia as having existed. They changed it to Snoop Dogg versus The Miz. So if you remember. They did this whole thing where Shane McMahon shows up and him and Miz were going to have a match of some sort. And on the very first leapfrog, Shane McMahon's quads just completely and totally explode off the bone. He collapses in a heap of just human flesh. And Snoop Dogg, who was there with the with the golden celebrity belt, was really quickly uh, just he just he, he, he acted quick in the moment. Crisis management from Snoop Dogg. Snoop D O double G decided to hop into the ring and have a match with the Miz. And hey, it wasn't that bad. He did like a people's elbow or something, and it was pretty well done. Uh, and then he won the match against the Miz. That was, it was honestly, it was probably one of my top WrestleManias for how bad it was because after Shane blew his quads out, they just acted like he didn't exist. They didn't do any replays. They didn't refer to Shane McMahon as having returned. They didn't do anything with this guy. They just bamped him from history. You're gone, son. 
Oh man, that shit was, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be, uh, you know, I don't want to poke fun at somebody getting injured, but the hubris of a guy coming at like 50, whatever years old, not having had a match in God knows how long, understanding probably better than most, the harsh realities of what wrestling can do on your body and being like, fuck it, I'm going to do a leapfrog. And then just watching it all fall apart. That it was just something special, awful, awful business, but man. <laughs> that shit was very darkly comical. All right, let's move on. Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 33. I was there for this. Should have been Undertaker's last match. Undertaker wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy with it. Looked like Undertaker was hurting most of the time. It's one of the matches where I stand by the idea that end of an era should have been the end of his era. Let's move on to WrestleMania 32 a year prior. Hey, another Roman Reigns match. This time it was against Triple H. Really, that year should have been Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. Ambrose should have won the title in the Royal Rumble uh, and then fought Roman Reigns there at WrestleMania. Maybe Dean Ambrose could have aligned with Triple H. Maybe that wouldn't have made sense. Whatever the case is, Roman Reigns versus Triple H was not a very good match, and I kind of feel like I know why. If you guys remember, Triple H kept on crotch-chopping Roman Reigns even though he's supposed to be the bad guy. I firmly believe that Vince and Triple H, or Triple H and Vince or whoever, decided that they wanted Roman Reigns, the performer, to bring something to the equation to deal, to sort of, you know, improv a way to get the crowd on his side. And and in doing the crotch chops was sort of the roadblock to that. It was like, hey, I'm going to start doing this shit. You got to bring me something to make the crowd connect to you. It's on you now, Roman. And, uh, and he couldn't do it, and the match completely sucked. Roman ended up winning, but it was awful. It was terrible. Let's talk about one more Roman Reigns match because it was that whole line of matches that were just terrible. Talking about Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34. This was probably peak Roman Brock awful. This is when they were trying to shove Roman Reigns down our throat, but Vince McMahon was so enamored with Brock Lesnar, he couldn't let go of the dude, and he just was like, okay, yeah, we're just going to have Brock spam the shit out of the finisher button. Roman's going to endlessly kick out until eventually he doesn't, and that's supposed to do what exactly? What was that supposed to do? Get us on Roman's side? He looked like an idiot. So, yeah, no, uh-uh, that match was horrible. It sucked. Next up, let's go way back in time. I told you guys yesterday, uh, I didn't really watch a whole lot of wrestling when I was a kid. It wasn't until college uh, that I got into wrestling, like Attitude Era. But uh, I I've seen uh, Mr. T versus Roddy Roddy Piper, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and uh, it was supposed to be a boxing match. And it was not that, and it just sucked. Boy, that was terrible. That was awful. So, yeah, Piper versus Mr. T. We're almost down to the end here. We got three more. Hogan versus Yokozuna, WrestleMania 9. This, to me, is kind of like the Shane McMahon Miz match in that it's mildly entertaining in how bold they were with it. Hogan, who had retired a year earlier at WrestleMania 8, uh, decided to come back. I think he did the tag match with uh, uh, Brutus Beefcake or whoever it was. What was it, like versus Money, Inc. or something like that? I don't know what it was. And, uh, and then he just sort of shows up at the end. Crowd goes crazy for him. Crowd loved that shit. Bret Hart obviously didn't. Uh, but he gave him his blessing to go in there and, and do the match anyways. I think he was still confused. And then uh, Hulk Hogan and, and Yokozuna had like a nine-second match or whatever it was. One leg drop later. Hulk Hogan is your WWF, WWF champion until like June, like two months later when Yokozuna got it from him. So, yeah, kind of crazy. Uh, and, and But still like really bad and, and, and really funny which is kind of like my sweet spot for wrestling. Uh, after that, we've got... Uh, so these two are probably like legitimately the worst two matches for me in WrestleMania history. Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez. That same pay-per-view that Hogan did the thing. WrestleMania 9. Holy shit, this match is bad. It's horrible. Giant Gonzalez's outfit is kind of awesome, though, because he just looks like naked guy with just the thickest of bush. fucking nasty they should have had like they should have painted like a little mushroom tip on. sorry anyways let's go ahead and get to my number one match the worst match in wrestlemania history and i think a lot of you will agree with this i'm talking of course about uh jerry lawler versus michael cole at wrestlemania 27 which probably for my money is the worst wrestlemania of all time oh my god this entire segment was like a half hour 
Michael Cole in the lead up to this, because it's around the time when I started watching again, Michael Cole nearly ran me off. His commentary was so bad. It was so cringy. It was so embarrassing. I'd be sitting there trying to watch Rob. Be like, man, I'm trying to get back into this wrestling thing. And then I would just hear him like run people down. Oh, Daniel Bryan, he's a nerd. Oh my God, it was so irritating. And then he had like the uh, the the coal miners or whatever it was. He had like the his little booth. And then they did this match, and it's just fucking horrible. It was like a, like from from beginning to end, like segment, not including the match itself. But I think the match was abnormally long too. Uh, it, it was just it was like a half hour, and it felt like three. It felt like three full hours, but it wasn't. Man, this was honestly the worst the worst segment slash match slash event probably in WrestleMania history. I can't think of anything that's worse than this. Honest to God, if you guys can, let me know in the comments below. What What is your singular worst moment in WrestleMania history? Let me know. Oh, a side note also. Sorry, I meant to put this on there. Anything involving... Santino as Miss WrestleMania. Anything involving Playboy pillow matches? Look, I'm a dude, right? Had my fair share of uh, Playboy magazines back in the day. I didn't even think it's a thing anymore. I like that stuff. Not in my wrestling. I don't need to see that in my wrestling. The two worlds kind of just need to exist separately. And so they would do these like three minute divas Playboy matches. And I'm like, why, why am I sitting here watching this? This is embarrassing. This is not, this does not belong. I, that's what I got magazines and, and now cell phones for. TMI probably.